and welcome to all of you uh, joining us from New York. Good morning or North America. Good afternoon if you're joining us from across the pond and obviously good evening if you're joining us from further afield. Uh, my name is Madeline Sinclair and I am uh, one of the co-directors of ISHR's New York office. And I also lead ISHR's work on reprisals related to engagement with the UN. Um, and uh, regional human rights systems as well. Uh, welcome to the launch of our new ISHR uh, end reprisals database. This database has been in the making for quite some time um, and we are very happy to be finally sharing it with you all um, and making it available as a resource to everybody. Um, we're going to put up, Lucy has just put a link in the chat to um, the actual database so you can click on it and join. Um, along as we present the database on your own screens. Um, by way of background and how this project came about, um, as many of you are undoubtedly aware, ISHR has been working for a very long time on the issue of reprisals, um, both on uh, individual cases on behalf of victims, but also from the perspective of strengthening the institutional response. And as part of that work, ISHR in 2021, um, just over a year ago, published a study looking at all of the cases and situations documented by the UN Secretary General between uh, 2010 and 2020. And in those 11 years of SG reporting, um, we, were, uh, we extracted and coded 709 cases or situations. And coding all of that data from those reports enabled us to study trends and patterns in the kinds of cases documented by the SG, how the cases have been followed up on over time, and also whether reprisals victims considered the UN's response effective. Um, Lucy is also going to add a link to that study in the chat for those of you who aren't familiar with the study. Um, that enabled us in turn to draw a number of conclusions and recommendations to further strengthen the UN's work on reprisals, as well as the work of other stakeholders, NGOs and states. Um, and in the wake of that study, we partnered with Herodox um, to create the End Reprisals database. So the idea was to make all of that uh, data publicly available and accessible um, for all to use, uh, for people to learn more about the individual cases and also to engage with the data um, so that you can analyze for yourself and for your purpose. So we're very pleased to have with us today our colleague Robert from Herodox, who's gonna provide um, an introduction and an overview to the database and its functionalities, um, show you a little bit of a user journey through the database. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, we are in webinar mode, so we will not be enabling um, attendees to take the floor directly. However, we really welcome your questions and your comments. Um, you can leave questions uh, in the Q&A and um, myself and Lucia from Herodocs are going to be answering those questions throughout the webinar. So please feel free to send them in as they come up. We'll try and uh, answer as many as possible as we go. And then if there are some questions that require a more elaborate response or a bit more of a uh, show and tell at the end, then Robert can take those up at the end. Um, there is no interpretation for, for the event today. Apologies for that. Um, and finally, the event is being recorded um, and will be subsequently uploaded uh, on our website. Uh, we have a YouTube channel and also at, on the database site itself. So just before I give the floor um, to Robert to introduce the database itself and to demonstrate its functionalities, I wanted to share a little bit of an overview of what is actually coded in the database. So um, just so that everyone is kind of situated in terms of the information one can find in it. Um, <clears throat> when we coded the cases and situations, um, we, we coded a, a very large number of case characteristics, and those are the filters through which you can um, filter the cases uh, in your searches in the database. So for each record in the database, we coded in what year, um, in which report year the case appears, um, the perpetrating country and what region that country is in. Um, which UN body raised the case if it happened before the SG report um, and when. Um, we looked at whether it, the individual, the victim was an individual, um, an organization or a group, um, a general situation, or in some cases, a preemptive statement regarding the risk of reprisals. 
We looked at uh, gender as documented by the Secretary General, the type of rights defended. We looked at whether a victim was a foreign national, a minor, a civil servant, a member of the security forces or the judiciary. Um, we coded the reprisals triggers. Um, so what sort of led to the reprisal, including the type of engagement, um, the UN body that was engaged and also the date. We coded the type of violation, um, whether the perpetrators were state or non-state actors, whether reprisals were based on new legislation. Um, we coded whether a report made a general comment about the country's environment for engaging with the UN. We also coded any government response, whether another state um, has raised the case at the UN and when, um, whether the country is cited for a pattern of reprisals in the context of a case, whether the report cites uh, self-censorship as an issue in the context of a case, also how many times a case has been followed up in subsequent SG reports when that follow-up occurred and the follow-up that was uh, follow-up inf information provided. Finally, we coded the follow-up trend in terms of how the case was progressing and whether the government responded to follow-up. So I know that's a lot to take in. Um, we wanted you know, to code the cases as comprehensively as possible. Um, and this will all become much clearer when you actually see the case records in a minute. Um, but I did wanna just provide that overview so that everyone um, has a basic understanding of what the database contains. And it's, it's a lot of really rich data. So with that um, brief introduction, I'd like to pass the floor now to Robert to introduce the database and show you its functionalities. And again, if you have any questions, um, please share, please put them in the Q&A uh, throughout the presentation and we will aim to answer them um, to the best of our abilities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madali, for uh, you introducing us to, to the project. Um, as she mentioned, my name is Robert, I am from Huridox, and I will be presenting to you the end reprisals database. Um, now I'm going to, I am showing you my, my screen to share from you, with you some of the functionalities of the platforms and show you how you can use the database for your advocacy work and other interests, interests that you may have in the reprisals documented by the United Nations since 2010. Um, please let me know all the questions and comments that you may have in the chat, as Madeline mentioned, so we can address them when I finish. Uh, as you can see, the website presents in its landing page a search form from uh, where you can look for a specific person, a group of individual or organizations mentioned in, in the reports from the United Nations Secretary General. While you browse this database, uh, you can easily navigate uh, the information contained in, in those reports, research, analyze, and take action actually on the case or situations so that together we can end reprisals. Mm -hmm. If you scroll down, you will see some basic visualizations just to give you an idea of how the reports and reprisals have trended up since 2010. Um, for example, you can see that there are 709 cases documented by the UN in 76 countries and so far we have this database contains 11 UN United Nations reports from the Secretary General. Um, you can also look to the data for each country. For example, if you um, if you click uh, oh, sorry if you click in a specific country on the map, let's say for example uh, Mexico, you can see uh, you can see a side panel where that that shows uh, a list of the cases documented in the report for this for that country. So far, we have six cases uh, of individuals documented in Mexico. There are other few other a few other charts that can help us understanding uh, the most frequent type, for example, of reprisals uh, that human rights defenders face while doing their work. Um, you can also check on the type of reprisals that human rights um, defenders um, encounter, and as well as the issue area in which they unfold. Um, you can learn more also about the work of in the International Service for Human Rights in the footer. There is a few links that you can visit to their main website to know about more about their, their, their work. Uh, also, you can visit their social media channels, uh, 
or subscribe to their newsletter as you can see in the link on the footer. There is also, uh, if you want to learn more about this specific project, about this database, there is also an about menu in the main navigation where you can learn more about the methodology used to collect, process, and analyze the data contained in this database, as well as, the, as some basic guidelines on how to submit a case to the United Nations. Um, I'm not going to go <laughs> to these links. I will actually invite you to you to explore the database, the, the website, enter the website and explore um, with, with all the information contained. And, and I am not doing that because I want to um, <clears throat> move forward to the main purpose of this database, which is actually showing the data. Uh, in the main navigation, you can see other options uh, that I will explain now. For example, you can search a case, a uh, defender story, or a report from through the form in the landing page, or you can click directly on the in the case tab. I'm going to uh, directly click on the case tab. Let me. So now you can see, um, you can see the full database with all the information available. Let's explore some of the info contained here to check what we can find. Let's say, for example, that I am a United Nations diplomat interested to know more about a case from Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, just to continue with the example showed a few minutes ago. So, um, so if, if I know the name of the person, I can type it direct, directly in the search form um, and check what results I can get. Or, or if I don't know the name of the person, I can always go to the to the map actually i can go from here in the case i can go to check this on the map view you can see that this is the full database we have a lot of cars seven seven hundred nine uh, cases uh, comprises in, in this database and we can you can see the data in this format in this car format but you can also see it in a table view uh, where you can actually uh, select some of the options contained in the database. This is a functionality to filter some of the data and order it, sort it by, 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 by these options. Or you can actually see it in a map view. This is a very interesting um, uh, way of viewing the data because you can see actually how much information is contained for each country. So let's say I'm going to Mexico in the map view of the library and I will see all the cases that I have here. I can see six records for persons. So I can select one specific case uh, or I can actually see from the other cases just to check on the country trends and how they, is the country information. So let's go back to the, to the, to the case library, uh, to the CARS library, and I'm going to look for, as I, call, as I could tell on the Mexico, in the information container for Mexico, I can look for um, Orlando Santao. <clears throat> Let's put just so only Orlando Santao because I couldn't remember what his last name. Uh, so I can see that there is a record for Orlando Santa Olaya Villarreal, and there is there are also other cases related to that person. I am going go. I am going through the case for Orlando for a specific, and I have here two options to explore the information for for him. I can click on the car, and I will see all the information for his case in a side panel that you can see uh, here. But this is perhaps a little bit um, tricky to read, so I can always click on the Learn More button contained in the car and I can see the information in the full page mode. From here, we can explore some basic data of the person, as well how the case has been followed up by the United Nations. For example, I have uh, well, the name of the person, I have the country where he is, um, in which report his case is contained. In this case, is in the report of 2017. I have also to which UN body his case has been raised and what kind of work does he do. Um, <clears throat> in this case, he's a, um, he has a, a, a complaining um, in a specific case. 
uh, in his working on civil and political rights. And also I can identify the reporter trigger of reprisal, the type of reprisal that Orlando has suffered and the follow-ups on the case in the United Nations reports from the Secretary General. This is a uh, very interesting information that the International Service for Human Rights has collected to follow up and analyze how the uh, reprisals cases uh, are being followed up by the United Nations and how I actually being responded by the government to which they are being denounced. So, for example, we can see in this um, car, in this in this info case for the case, we can see that there are uh, a specific data for here, for example, how many times the case has been followed up in subsequent uh, Secretary General reports, we can see that the case has been followed up twice. Uh, one, it was in 2018, and the second one was in 2020. And for each report, we can see the exact information that is mentioned in the report. Uh, this is actually a text extracted from the reports. We can have, um, <clears throat> you can see a number before each paragraph, and there is, that is the number of the paragraph in the Secretary General report. Uh, where the information for this specific person is contained. So in the report from 2018, you can look for the paragraph 33, where you will see the information, this same information. And, and in the 2020 report, you can see on the paragraph 83, uh, 83, where you can see the information for that person. This will give us, of course, uh, some um, basic analysis on the case now from here we can from here we can state that the case has been followed up for uh, along three years and and so far is uh, it has had some development uh, we can see from the 2020 10 from the 2020 i'm sorry uh, we can see that the trend for this case has had significant positive and negative developments and we can also identify which dates has been the date the case has been followed. Of course, not all cases containing in this database has been has some follow up. There have been mentioning, of course, in some of the reports, but have 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 not some follow ups. But we invite you to explore the data and check um, and check which cases are being documented and how is their cases being followed up. Okay, so let's continue playing with some of the data in this in this database. Let, let's take another example. Uh, we, we already see that this is a in, in this previous example and how the data the database can serve to follow in, following up on a specific reprisal situation from a country or from a group of individuals. Uh, now let's take another example. I am, I am no longer a UN diplomat. I am now a journalist interested in the general human rights situation from Saudi Arabia. And I am looking for data for a press note that I am working on. Um, I, can, I can do uh, a few things from, from, these, from these cases. For example, I can look for the data contained in the Saudi Arabia country from the country, or I can go actually to the case uh, look through the cases, and I have two ways to filter the data for a country. As I was mentioned, I can go click to, to map view, and I can select the Saudi Arabian country to check all the cases contained in that database. But let's say I want to filter more the data, not only by its country. I want to know, for example, only the cases for a specific year. Let's say I am a journalist working on a and on a note, on a press note uh, for reprisals related to the pandemic in 2020. So I can, from the, from the case library, I can select, uh, in this case, I'm going to select the case, and I can filter in the side panel from all, all, of, all of the options that are contained in this database. I can select, for example, I can go here and look for the country where the person belongs, or look for the specific country. Let's look for the country here. And I have here from country, the, so I can type here Saudi Arabia and I will click on Saudi Arabia. I already have 17 cases and I can actually filter those cases by uh, the year 2020. 
this is actually um, in, uh, in in 2020 i can identify that i have four cases and for they, those four cases i am only interested for example well i can actually check here already which type of data is containing so i can see that there are uh, there are two people munir al adam and abdulaziz Joseph mohammed that have been their cases have been documented in the reports but also i have other type of reprisals that this database also contains for example i have uh, general cases concerning engagement with the special repertoire on extreme poverty and human rights and also i have some general situation address i'm going to click here just to look into some of the data we have um, just a specific record on a specific record on the general situation and if i can go for example to let's say munir al adam i can see uh, some of the information for that specific person from which i can uh, i can work on my notes for example as a journalist i could give a turn to my report on how the person with disabilities are being treated by the authorities in these specific conditions um, let's go back a little bit and I am going to uh, unfilter some of the data just to um, show, you, show you some of the other information. So I'm going to unfilter for the 2020. I will now have 17 cases. And for these 17 cases, let's say that I am not quite interested in the general situations because they won't, as a journalist, they won't give me this human story, this uh, size, this, this story that I am looking for, like putting a face into the, my note, into my press report. So uh, I am going to filter the data also by the type of record. Um, I am going just to select the name individual. So this will take me to all the records related to uh, individuals uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Let's say my report also has some uh, gender perspective, so I can actually select on female because my note perhaps is addressing uh, women's rights in Saudi Arabia in 2020 or women's rights in Saudi Arabia uh, documented in the in the in the report. So I'll now I have a, a, a few cases. I have four cases and this data actually, if I am a journalist, I am very interested to work on the data to uh, check more about its information. So when I filter this, I can export it to a CSUB file. So I can just click the button uh, here in the side panel, which says export CSUB. And a dialogue, a pop-up dialogue will show up with uh, to type some letters. This is only a security measure. And I'm just uh, putting the characters and I will click on the export button and a CSUB file has been exported to my computer from which I can open it on uh, a, a program, a spreadsheet program, and I can explore the data. Um, this is a very interesting case uh, from which this database can actually work for journalists or other human rights advocacies, advocacies working on defending human rights. There are also a lot of other options that we can explore in this database. Of course, I will invite you all to check on the, to enter the website, to check on all the cases that you can have and uh, play with the data. Uh, and reprisals database also includes some human rights defenders stories. You can see here, I'm going back to the landing page, to the main web page, and you can see here, uh, a uh, tab menu for defenders stories. I'm going to click here, and this is our, these are other cases of human rights, um, brave people taking action to defend human rights around the globe. Uh, these are, specifically speaking, these are cases that have inspired IASHR and for which the organization is sharing some of their stories with you. 
Um, these cases have a, another type of inform information because these more, more than a follow-up case are uh, an informative case from which you can take some action or learn more about their story. So for example, we can look uh, for Rami Kamel, a human, right, human rights defender from Egypt. Uh, he's a member of Egypt's Coptic uh, religious minority, and you can check on some of the his story behind uh, what specific reprisal happened to him and what ISHR is uh, inviting you to do to um, reflect or to showcase his work uh, through other communication channels. So with this, I would like to finish my presentation, just inviting you again to explore the data, to enter the website at nreprisals.ihr.ch. Uh, you can uh, visit the webpage publicly available already, explore some of the data, download, download it to work with it offline, and invite you or the community also to visit the website. Again, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the chat and we are happy to address them as far as we can in this, uh, in, in, in the time that we have for this. Thank you again for all your attention and I will leave the word to Madeline for other comments that she may have or other exercise or examples that we would like to explore. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, I have been um, endeavoring to answer questions as they've come up in the chat, uh, in the Q&A throughout your presentation. Um, I'm not seeing any more right now. Um, so I guess this is a uh, kind of call, uh, last call for any questions um, that anyone has uh, about the database, about its functionalities, um, and of course, we, you know, remain um, uh, very interested in any sort of further feedback. We know it's a lot to take in. And um, obviously, as you start exploring the database and using it um, for your needs, um, it would be very interesting to hear uh, any feedback that you have. Um, just checking to see if we have any more questions coming in. I don't see anything, um, but feel free to contact um, me at any time. Uh, maybe I'll just put my own uh, email address in the chat just so everyone, uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me about questions or um, uh, how to use the database or really anything, um, especially feedback. If you have anything as we continue to improve the database, please let me know. Um, all right, I'm still not seeing any more questions, so I think we will close there. Thank you again. Um, huge thank you to Herodox, um, who we had the real pleasure to partner with um, in this project. Um, and thanks again to Robert for the presentation. Thank you to all of our attendees for your attention and for your contributions. Um, I'm just looking uh, very, yep. Uh, in case the case has been released, does it remain in the database? Um, so I think uh, Iman Helmi is asking whether or not um, if a case, I think what you mean is whether a case has been resolved. So if a case is uh, resolved satisfactorily by the victim, uh, by the state um, uh, from the victim's perspective. Um, so we will uh, leave it in the database. Um, we have a uh, field that we can include um, information on the status of a case. And so as cases, and it would be great to see more cases resolved, as cases are resolved, um, we will be updating the records of those cases to show that the case has been resolved. Um, we've also, um, you know, we're very open to anonymizing cases if we are contacted by a victim who doesn't want their case to appear um, publicly in this way. Of course, we are pulling from public records. There's nothing here that we are um, divulging that isn't already public. Um, we're just making it much easier to find the information and work with the information. Um, but we do want to say that if it's causing problems for anyone, and, and certainly, um, you know, our, our main objective is the uh, safe work of human rights defenders. So please be in touch if, if being in the database visibly is causing a problem for you. 
Um, Iman, I hope that answered your question. Um, and yeah, please spend some time exploring the database and send us your feedback um, once you do. Thank you so much, everyone.